In this video, we're going to be looking at two-way tables. So here is an example of a two-way table. We just have a selection of people that have either taken maths or not have or have not taken maths rather, and uh, we have separated them into the, whether the students are male or female. And the first thing to do with a two-way table like this is to make sure that you have added up the totals. The totals may well be there if the um, question's in the exam, but if not, then they need to be. Okay, so we're going to do 72 plus 48, so that's going to get me 120. We've got 58 and 22, so that's going to get me 80. So 120 plus 80 will get me 200. Now 72 plus 58 will get me, um, what's that going to get me? 130. And 48 and 22 will be 70. Okay, and 130 plus 70 makes the 200. So that's what I really need there. So now, let's say we want to work out what is the probability of picking a student that studies maths. Well, there are 130 students studying maths out of 200. And so the probability is 130 out of 200. Now, you can simplify these fractions down if you like. I'm not going to worry about that for the time being, okay, in this video. Now, the probability of uh, a student being female, well, there are 80 female students out of 200 students, and so 80 over 200 is that probability. The probability of selecting a student that is both male and doesn't do maths. So, male and doesn't do maths, there are 48 students there out of the 200. And so that is the probability I'm looking for. So 48 out of the 200 students. Um, how about selecting a student that is either female or studies maths or is both, or does both, okay? So, students that are female, so 58 and 22, or they study maths, so those two, or both, okay, so female and maths. So 72, 58 and 22, okay, add those together, 72 plus 58 plus 22, and that gets me 152. So 152 out of 200. So remember, that union means um, A or B or both thinking back to the Venn diagrams. If we're looking at the probability of selecting a student that is male, given that we know that they don't do maths, then all I need to do is to cover up those students that do maths, and I'm just going to look at this row. So not doing maths. So given that we know that they don't do maths, what's the probability of selecting a student that's male? Well, there's 48 out of the 70 students who don't do maths. And so that is the probability that we want, 48 out of 70. It's no longer out of 200 because we know that we're only selecting from the batch of students that don't do maths. And finally, we've got probability of a student studying maths given that they are female. So, okay, so given that they're female, you're just looking at that column. So it's out of 80 students. So the probability of a student studying maths is 58 out of the 80, okay? So effectively, when you've got conditional probabilities on a two-way table, you're effectively just looking at a particular column or a particular row, and that's based on this one here, the given that, okay, probability. Now, I've also written down this question here. Write down two events from the table that are mutually exclusive. So I just wanted to bring back that terminology. What does it mean for two events to be mutually exclusive? Well, that means that the two events can't happen at the same time. And that is happening from our table in the fact that we have specifically 120 males and 80 females. Now, in, in general, um, we cannot say that these two are mutually exclusive, but from the table that we have, it would, it would be true that male and female are two events 
that would be mutually exclusive in this case. Alongside that, you also have another two events, maths and not maths. They are mutually exclusive because they cannot happen at the same time. Okay? So you can either have maths and not maths or male and female in the case of this table.